Hi everybody, it's Dave Oates from Joanna North Associates and Find a Monkey, back with another video this week. Um, wanted to talk this week a little bit about who do you think you are, which I noticed is, is, uh, is on TV um, tonight as we're recording on Wednesday. Um, it's obviously a really successful show, I think it's probably nearly 20 years old or something now, I think it started back in 2004. Um, and it's really interesting for people to watch, but obviously you're finding out about your past, that's the people who've on the show, are there to learn about their heritage. Often in these situations, when I watch the show, you'll find that people obviously know their parents, know their grandparents most likely, but beyond that, they know very little. Um, and that tends to be where they pick up and really start to learn things. I think for people who are interested in that kind of thing, it's the closest you can come to, to understand how what it might be like when we're trying to help people looking for a parent or a grandparent because it's quite hard to imagine not knowing your parents if you've never experienced it. Um, and by parents, I do mean birth parents. Um, we have a lot of respect for um, um, adoptive parents um, and we sort of do refer to them as parents, but, but knowing your birth family and your first family can be quite a fundamental thing for people. But I think, uh, who do you think you are is so interesting for people because it's it's that, that mystery and that not knowing, you know, what's in the past for you. And I think it's a very similar thing when you're looking for uh, a birth parent, particularly when you've been adopted or perhaps you've had a father who you've never met. Um, it's a really similar feeling, but probably more intense because um, most people would know who their parents are. Um, so to not know for a lot of people can be really incredibly important. Obviously, it's, that's why we exist really as an organisation is to help people in that situation um, and try and help them find, the, not only find the person we're looking for, which obviously is a really important part of what we do because without that we can't progress in any way, but then the, the, the connecting, the getting in touch with somebody, explaining why we're approaching them, um, often to explain there's a person that they didn't even know about and then try and put those people in touch, provided that's something that everybody wants. Um, I think most people who come to us looking to contact family and looking to try and make a connection, get some information certainly, but, but hopefully I think for most people they will be wanting to make some kind of a connection. That's quite a difficult thing to predict what will happen because everybody's different and everyone has their own kind of uh, ways of being and personalities and thoughts about um, perhaps how you might view a relative who you've never known. For some people, instantly they can think, well, we're closely related, so your family, that's it, you know, and they will think about it that way. But for a lot of people, they very much think about the people around them that they know and love as their family. And then there isn't really anybody else outside that circle, if you like. And it can be quite hard for people to, to then open their minds up to think about a person that's closely related to them, but is a complete stranger. People, in my experience, people who are prepared to sort of process that information and, and explore the possibility of, of, of communicating with somebody will often uh, find it is a really rewarding experience. Um, not for everybody, but, but if people are prepared to open themselves up, I think it can be a really rewarding experience for them. Um, but it does take uh, a change of mindset sometimes, and it takes time for people to kind of really get their head around the fact that somebody's out there and that somebody exists. I've got a really good example of a case I've been working on this week where we had a client who was looking for a brother who'd been adopted. Um, we found him and unfortunately he died. Um, and we went on to contact his, um, his, one of his children, adult children, obviously. And um, he was aware that his dad was adopted and aware that his dad had been looking to find out more information about his adoption before he died. but had never led, you know, never carried that on. And for him, it very much like, you know, left that all in the past and was getting on with his own life. Um, but he was prepared to listen to us, pre prepared to receive a letter from our client so he could perhaps start to understand something about them and what they felt like and what was important to them. And people often respond to, to that really well because they will kind of sense, well, here's a person who's related to me. I don't know them, but what they're saying is, they want to know about me, my family, my my dad in this case. And I think on a human level, people naturally will want to help somebody like that. So I think the first step for most people is deciding that you want to help the person who's reaching out. 
but making a connection is only ever something that can happen slowly and over time where people will get to know one another because as I've sort of mentioned before, you com you're close relatives but you're, you're complete strangers and you've got to you've got to get to know one another and it's always best that that process happens organically where you try and keep your expectations as low as possible um, so and be respectful of the other people involved in the process and and just see what happens you know and for, for, for most people who do that you know things will build organically and slowly and naturally and you will hopefully you know if, if, if your wish is to have some other, some kind of permanent connection that will that will happen for you but it doesn't happen for everybody but I think the best advice we can give to people is to, to just work slowly towards it and just see what happens rather than trying to work towards a specific outcome that you wish to have that might not quite suit the other person but also if you're forcing the issue it might not always work out the way you want it to so being respectful letting things develop naturally is the best way to proceed um, I hope that's helpful I might have